Hey all welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren. And today is a day a lot of you guys have been waiting for. I've been waiting for it. I'm going to take out my 45 day dry aged brisket. I'll be right back. All right, y'all, I'm ready to get this thing unwrapped. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to eat it today. I don't wanna, uh, can't cook it up because um, I'm gonna have some company over next weekend is what we're gonna cook this for. So what I wanna do is get it out of this, oh, my bag, so that we can uh, get it all um, trimmed up and get it frozen. And then next week we're gonna cook it up and uh, see how this turned out. But right now, this looks pretty good. I mean, it's kind of like the uh, top sirloin I did. It's pretty, um, Hard. You can tell it lost a lot of moisture. I don't see uh, anything through the bag where there's any kind of mold or anything. But I'm going to go ahead and just get this thing taken off. And like I said, so far, you know, with the two pieces that I've done with the Umai bags, they've been pretty good. Um, pretty easy. Yeah, this is, it feels just like the uh, top round or top sirloin. This is just a little bit harder. Kind of like that beef jerky texture that I was talking about before with the uh, top sirloin. But it it's, uh, looks like we had a pretty good seal all around because it was pretty tight there. Get rid of that and I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Give this a little peek here. I'm gonna bring the camera over just so you guys can get a close up. Don't see any any mold at all. Fat feels really weird. It's kind of tacky. Everything's kind of tacky, like uh, jerky. And it's kind of hard. It's kind of like a leathery skin. We're gonna go ahead and get this trimmed up. And see how much we got left. It was about a 16 pound prime brisket when it went in. I'm thinking this is probably going to end up being about eight or nine pounds by the time we get it trimmed up and all the moisture that was lost. So I'll be right back. All right. So some of this thinner end here of the flat, I'm probably going to end up losing a good bit of this because it's pretty thin. So I think next time I do this dry aging with a brisket, I'm going to try to get a fatter, um, flat end here because that looks like it's pretty much dry all the way through so I'm going to cut a chunk off and yeah there's some there's a some in there that I might be able to use but I'm going to kind of try to get rid of this uh, really thin part and like I said before we're not going to throw this out we're going to chop it up and we're going to use it to make some good ground beef with um, but yeah I mean can tell it lost a lot of moisture no oddball smell at all so it's um came out pretty good as far as i can tell i'm gonna go ahead and start trimming it and we're gonna trim just the the like like just like on the top sirloin i did just a, a very thin amount try to get some of this fat off but i'm gonna go ahead and get this trimmed up i'm not gonna bore you guys with me trimming it because it's gonna probably take the take some surgical cuts here to uh, get a decent amount of uh brisket off of this so i'm gonna go ahead and trim it up then i'll be back with you guys yeah hey, i'm still trimming this away one of the things that's going to make this harder to trim than the top sirloin is that i'm trying to keep this whole after i trim it i, I on the top sirloin or on a ribeye you can cut it up into steaks and then just trim the little pieces off but i'm trying to keep this whole so it makes it a little bit more difficult so what you're wanna, going to want to use to trim it is either a boning knife or a flexible fillet knife because you really want to get it just under that tough piece of uh, skin here you don't want to cut too deep into the meat because you especially in this thin flat part area you just want to get it to just underneath the skin to where you got the meat because you don't want to lose too much of this meat just to show you where I'm at here to show you how thin this goes and it's, it's really just like a piece of beef jerky so 
So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just trimming off as thin layer as possible. It's going to take just a little bit longer than you would, like I said, because you're trying to keep this piece whole when you cook it. That's it. I'll be back. All right, all. I think I got it all done. And boy, this is probably only about four pounds now. Um, this here is all mostly from the meat side. There's a little bit of fat in here, um, not much. I'm going to kind of pull out some of the chunks. So this is what I'm going to save for um, to mix in with ground beef down the road. This here is mostly fat. Um, when I flip this thing over to trim the fat cap side, that was a lot easier to uh, trim than the just the plain meat side but I got pretty much everything all the discoloration off um, it looks dark just because that's the way the color of this meat's going to be so like I said this was a 16 pound brisket I probably lost a good six to eight pounds of moisture and now just trimming off that fat this is probably another good two or three pounds right here um, so yeah this is probably five six pounds at the most so that's a full 16 pound packer brisket dry aged for 45 days so like i said i can't uh, cook it up tonight so i'm going to go ahead and throw this in a freezer in a vacuum sealer bag freeze it up and i will cook it in about four or five days <music> All right, guys, I'm back. It is Thursday. It's about quarter to 10. I'm going to put this um, 46 day dry aged brisket in the sous vide. We're going to do it about 36 hours and we're going to do it at a lower temp. I kind of want this to be around medium. I don't want it to be well done, but I do want the fat to render some. So I want it to be around the medium. So I'm going to do it at right around 138. For 36 hours then we're going to take it out and throw it on the smoker for a couple hours so it's still frozen solid hopefully this will turn out pretty good so i'll see you guys in 36 hours all right guys it's been about 36 hours it looked 35 or so but it's time to get this thing on the smoker. I pulled it out of the bag already. We didn't have a whole ton of juice. That's because we um, were, we sous vide it at 138, the low temp. Because remember, I want this to be around medium or so when it gets done in the smoker. So I'm keeping it at 138. It might get up to 145 or so when it gets, uh, when we pull it off, but we'll kind of monitor that. We don't want it to get too over the 138, but. I'm going to go ahead and season it up with some of the uh, Running Wild Gourmet Beef Rub just to get a nice coating on it. This isn't going to be your typical uh, brisket, believe it or not. Uh, it's not going to have a heavy black bark that you normally see um, guys do when they do the traditional barbecue brisket. This is going to kind of look more like a brisket you get in a restaurant um, in New York City at the deli but it's going to be super tender and medium done and have some nice smoke to it so I got the Kamado Joe Big Joe up to uh, almost up to temp <clears throat> remember I didn't dry this off we're treating this um, like I would a chicken or something we want to have the moisture on it we're not trying to develop a quick sear and get a Maillard reaction that way. We want the moisture on the uh, brisket to pick up smoke and to hold some of this rub on. And we're at, what we're actually going to do also is when it's in the smoker is about every 15 or 20 minutes I'm going to spritz it with some, it's a mixture of apple juice and water so that it picks up some more moisture so it picks up more smoke that bark develops a little better so all right guys 46 day age brisket getting ready to go on the smoker 
see you in a few. I can't wait to try this. Take a look at that. Nice and golden brown. It's real juicy still. It looks amazing. And this here is the flat portion here. And the uh, points on this side. So let me take a look here. I think I want to slice from the flat. Because that's usually the tougher part, and, you know, the most uh, drier part. I'm gonna take a slice from there and take a look at that. Look at the color on that. You can tell it's dry age because it's not. not as thick as it normally would be we lost a lot of weight on this brisket it was about 16 pounds take a look at that I'm gonna slice a piece of the point off too so you can kind of see oh, that looks pretty cool it looks kind of like a pastrami or something very juicy still though you can see the fat still uh, rendering in there kind of coming out I'm gonna take a piece of the flat here it's not, not quite the foldable, you know, cooked for 15 hours at uh, 275 on the grill, but it being dry aged, I wouldn't expect it to be. Very tender though. Not dry. Wow, very beefy from that dry aging. Totally different than any kind of brisket I've ever had before. Very beefy punch. Very good, though. Wow. It's really hard to describe it. Um, wow, it's just, uh, it's a really, uh, a lot more beefy flavor than any brisket I've ever had in my life. I have to try some of this point, because this is the fattier part. And take a look at that, guys. It um, Very good color on it me anyway it's not dried out at all very moist man that dry aging is just a it does an awesome job on this something I highly recommend doing though because it is hard to stop eating this I and mean, it's still juicy you can see the the fat you know shining and glistening in there but it kicks a very strong, beefy punch. So, pretty awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you got some information out of this. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Watch some more of our videos. We've got plenty in our, uh, in our library now. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.